Let's have a look at WordPress 5.5, which is scheduled to be released in the middle of August. Now, the version I'm going to show you is still in beta. All the features I'm going to show you are going to be in the final release, but this might not work perfectly. So I'm walking a tightrope without a net. So let's see how that goes. One of the big changes, and there are many in WordPress 5.5, deals with the Gutenberg editor. The developers are getting us more towards a full site editing experience. And in fact, in the next version, 5.6, which will come out in December, it will really be a full site editing experience. So you can see a lot of the sidebars are gone, or at least they're hidden, right? And they're still there. Like, for example, here is the inserter. Okay, it's right over here. It looks a little bit different. It's a little cleaner and a little easier, to, I think, to work with. If you don't want it, you can click out of there, okay? If you want your sidebar over here, and you're gonna want this to work on blocks and in the document itself, that is still there. That's this little button over here, okay? So by default, when you open up a page now, it's gonna look really strange because like what happened to everything? It's now just, wow, this is the page that we're gonna edit. It looks like the actual page on the website. And that again is one of the whole purposes of where Gutenberg is going. It's going more towards the idea of a full page builder. Wow, what a difference. And one of the things they've added to WordPress 5.5 is this preview. So, well, preview is not exactly new, but look at this. So you can now select a desktop view, a tablet view. You can also select a mobile view. And in fact, what's kind of cool too, even though this doesn't look very good, well, there you go, it looks a little bit better. If you wanted to say to design in the mobile view, you can just click on inserter. Wow, look at that. And then you can work with your, or add different blocks to your design. That's fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna close this off and we're gonna go back to preview into the desktop. And let's actually make something, okay, or show you some of the key features of the new Gutenberg editor in WordPress 5.5. So I'm gonna click over here and this will take us to a place that looks a little familiar. That is a list of all the posts. And let's highlight a couple of the main new features in the Gutenberg editor that comes with WordPress 5.5. So one of them is something called the block directory. Now, let me explain how this is gonna work and then I'm gonna show it to you. You know, currently, if you want new blocks, you have to download a plugin, install the plugin, and then maybe that plugin has like 20 blocks and you're gonna only use one. And what do you do with all the 19 that you're not gonna use? There's ways of dealing with that, but that's like a lot of overhead that you don't need. So the concept of the block directory is you're gonna search for the block that you want or you think that you want, and then you're gonna add it to your site and you're gonna use it. And the block directory only has one of blocks. That is, well, let me show you. So I'm gonna go over here and you can see right over here, search for a block. now. I'm thinking of, hey, I need an accordion block. Now, an accordion, well, you'll see what it is in a second. Accordion. And what it does is it searches and it finds two possibilities. One is called accordion toggle, and here's one called hot accordion. And I looked at the difference between the two. And I like this one over here. So I'm just gonna click on add. And what's gonna happen is this, this block is gonna be installed directly into my site. I don't have to do anything until this works. <laughs> and there you have it. It's right onto my page. Now it says it over here. I have the block over here, okay? But it immediately just entered it right into my page. And I'll show you like an according would be here is a question, let's get that right. Here is a question and over here, here is an answer. Here is an answer, okay. And if I wanted to preview this, well, let's just do that so you can see how this works. And you've seen accordions, no doubt. So here is a question and that's an accordion. So it gives me the opportunity of adding a block that doesn't come with the Gutenberg editor by default.
Of course, I have to know the name of the block that I'm looking for, right? That would help so that when I do my search, I'll have it. Now, if I close this right over here and go back and I scroll all the way down here, you'll now see that this block, the, the hot accordion block, was installed. A couple of things about these blocks. One, again, it's only going to be just one block. There aren't going to be any commercial messages in there. So the developers who are making these things understand that there's no way that they're really going to make money doing this. Uh, no commercial messages like, you know, upsells or anything like that. And uh, again, it's only one block. So that's a really great idea. Instead of installing a plugin that has multiple blocks that you don't use, this is just one block. All right. Uh, if I want to use it again, I just click on it. And right below here, I would just type in another question and then type in another answer. Okay. So how great is that? So there are, interestingly enough, let's just take a look here. And so in the WordPress plugins directory, you'll see that there's a host section now for blocks, but you don't really want to come here to get the block. The place to get the block is right through here. Let me just go back here for a second and show you. Right now, it, this is very early in the block directory development. It just started. And if I go down here, you'll see there's only the five pages of blocks. Some of these blocks have only been used like 10 times, five times, 100 times. This is really early. Eventually, this number is probably going to be 100, 200, 300. Who knows? But they're going to be block developers developing single purpose blocks that's the whole point point. and again you don't have to come here to get it the best place to get it is straight from here so the block directory is a brand new feature it's actually been in development for about a year and a half maybe a little longer than that but in wordpress 5.5 you're now going to see the block directory in action if you don't like the block or you want to ever turn it off just like anything else you go over here to the three dots and if you wanted to turn it off, you would go to the block manager and then you would search for, let's say, the hot accordion and you would turn it off and you wouldn't be able to use it again. It just disabled it. And if I scroll down here, well, you'll see it's just not there anymore. So that's fine if I just didn't want to use it again. And that's true for any kind of block. You can always disable it. The content that you created with that block is still available. So don't think like, oh, I just destroyed all my content. No. Another thing I want to do is show you the block patterns, which is a new feature of WordPress. And you're going to see this in WordPress 5.5. So let me get rid of this stuff over here. Okay, I can just do that over there. Let's click out of here. I'm getting used to this too. Uh, if I want to remove the content that I've created, let's just go back like this. And I'm just going to click back here. Okay. And let's open up the inserter again. And this time you'll see, well, blocks, I get that, but patterns, this is new. Now, the idea of patterns is that there are pre-built templates that you could use for your page. And this is also still very new, but this is coming. And the way this will work is, let's say you get a particular theme. Well, that theme author may suggest five or six or ten or how many templates that would be useful for the theme that you're working in. Boy, that is really a time saver. What a great idea that is. So in this case, I'm just going to pick... Let me just pick this one right over here. And all I have to do is, I thought all I had to do is click on it. <laughs> and like I say, it could be a little buggy. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay. And not quite smooth. That's the idea of beta. Okay. And I'll close this out. And this is good. So if I wanted, I have what's basically, this is over here, a cover image, which I can change, just like any cover image. And over here, some text that goes on top of the cover image. Now you'll notice that the toolbar is also cleaner than it used to be. It's actually a little bit bigger and a little bit different. Let's explore some of this stuff over here. So now when I click on the paragraph symbol, if I want to transform the text into something else, this is the way I do it. So they used to have this transform tool. No more. It's just built right into the actual icon. And if I wanted to change this to a heading, I could change it into a heading. I'm going to change it back to the paragraph. 
And another thing too in this toolbar, and this is a new feature, is that I can change where the text is positioned. So right over here, so when I hovered over the P symbol, I click on this, and now I have a chance to, right over here, this icon over here lets me reposition the text and I can position it to the upper right or upper left, center, upper right. I think you get the point. And if I want to just go back to the middle, here it is over here. So this little box here is just a diagram of where you can position the text. And then you could do the usual texty things with this, of course, you know, put change the color, change the text, all that kind of change the font. You can still do all that stuff. But the idea of positioning the text on the cover image, that's changed. Now, in addition to the block directory and block patterns, there's also some image editing tools that are new in WordPress 5.5. Let me show you what I mean. So I go over here. Let's get rid of what I've already done. Okay, and start from the beginning. And this time I'm going to add an image. So I am going to just do this. And I'm going to look for my image, okay, which is now over here in the media section. Fine. I'm going to search for an image in my media library. That should look familiar. Okay. And the one I'm going to pick is this guy over here. Okay. And we get some new tools. Let's get this out of the way. So just click that out. One of the things we can now do is crop the image. So let me move this up a little bit. And so I clicked on the crop tool and you actually have two things you can do. One is you can zoom and two is you can change the aspect ratio of the image. Let's do the zoom tool first. And I think people are gonna like this. Wow, I can now do this. How cool is that? And if I want that and I do, I'm just gonna hit apply. And, and I can still do the usual kinds of things like change the size like this, okay? But in addition to that, I now have, if I click on the crop tool again, it gives me two tools. So two tools are hidden behind that crop tool. And one is the aspect ratio. The other one was the zoom. So if I wanted to change the aspect ratio, let's say I just wanted a little sliver like that. I just move, I just drag it over. And I say, okay, that's what I want. And I'm going to hit apply. And that's done. Wow, that's kind of distorted, but you get the idea, right? Okay, if I don't like what I did, again, I can just go back and undo. Another thing you can do under the crop tool is if you click that crop tool, you get a rotating tool. So you can rotate in case you uploaded the image upside down or whatever, you know, you want to change the the rotation of it, you can do that. Always hit the apply button whenever you're doing something to finish it off, okay? And that's it. So a lot of nice little tools. Now there's also one other thing that's new about images and image editing. It's not really editing, but it's more like images. Let me just get rid of this image. And we're just gonna, you know, let's just go over here. And here's something new too, actually, in the user interface. They used to have icons over here and they don't have them anymore, something I don't like. But I'm gonna remove the block. And I said, there's a, little, there's a new feature with images. So, well, what happens if I click over here? I haven't showed you that yet. Well, they really shrunk this down. There's not a whole lot going on here, right? If you click over here, you can browse all the blocks and use them. Or if I go back to over here, I can just see, hey, I have the image block right here. This time I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna insert this from a URL. So I'm gonna click that. Now, you might find an image on the web. You shouldn't steal this. So I'm gonna take one of my own images, okay? And say, hey, I wanna get that image from my website that I have to this website that I'm building, my own image. So I'm gonna go over to over here and I say, I want this image. So the typical thing would be to maybe save it on your desktop and then upload it to your media file. You can save some steps here. And all you need to know is the URL of this image. Well, you say like, how do I do that? Well, not too bad. All you have to do is go over here where it says view image info and copy the URL of the image. Go back to the site you're working on. Right over here, insert that URL and hit the arrow button. Wow, so what happens is 
the image on the other site goes right into this site. Okay, I'm not sharing that image anymore. I'm actually bringing it into the media library. Just to make sure, I want to click on this, and that will actually bring the image into the media library. I will show you that in a second. And then you can just do your regular image edits like I showed you before if you want to change, crop, rotate. Okay, you get the idea. There you go. We don't want that. All right, and just to make sure that it is in the image library, I'm going to go into the media library. And you'll now see, in fact, let's do this. Let's take a look at some things while we're in the media library. So that image got transported from the other site into this particular site. And that means if that site ever goes down, the image disappears, whatever, I have the image in my media library. So that's really handy, and it's just much more convenient to do it the way they now have it set up than the way it was before. Notice, too, I used this guy over here, right? And then I did some cropping. And when I did the cropping, the cropping process created new images. Now, I think that's a bit of a problem, quite frankly. I don't like the way WordPress does this. This is a editorial comment here because I'd rather have them done with this with CSS code than with creating new images because, wow, then you're going to end up with like so many images in your media library if you do a lot of cropping. So just be advised of that. Okay. One other thing that's pretty new, and it's the last thing that's new with the Gutenberg editor, is if I go, let's go back to here and... And this solves a problem that really bugged me, which was whenever you would like select something, like let's say several blocks and you wanted to edit them, you couldn't do it. What do I mean by that? So you'd have to like select one block and I wanted to change, let's say the background here. Then I'd have to select this block and change the background there to match that. You don't have to do it that way anymore. You can now do multiple selects and I'm first going to show you how it doesn't work and then I'm going to show you how it does work. So if I, so let's say I, I say, okay, I want to just change the background for all of this. Well, there's no way to do that, okay? Because you're selecting different types of blocks. So you, if I click over here, you'll see what I mean. There's no single, I just clicked, I just selected nine blocks, but there's no way to work on those nine different blocks at the same time. Not yet, anyway. Maybe eventually, but not yet. But what you can do is that if you have the same type of block. In this case, they're two different paragraph blocks. Now I can do that, okay? And so under paragraph or um, font size, if I wanna make those two larger, and I can do that. So as long as they're contiguous, I suppose, and they're also of the same kind, in this case, both paragraph blocks, the multiple select feature in Gutenberg, which is new, is gonna work. That's good. This is something that really bugged me. Now let's look at some things that are new to WordPress 5.5, but really are not involved or do not involve the Gutenberg editor itself. And there are significant changes here too. So let's leave. The first one of these is something called auto update. Now, I think this is a little controversial. Uh, this is certainly something that's been discussed forever, but that is the following. We know that if people don't keep their WordPress plugins and theme software up to date, that they're exposing their site to all kinds of vulnerabilities and that the site could be hacked or compromised in some way. And that's always been a big problem. So now there is a solution, sort of. <laughs> and that's my editorial comment. Okay, so you'll see right over here, you can now decide which plugin I would like to enable auto update. And if there's an update for that, the plugin will automatically update. Now, I would be very careful in doing this because what happens if there's an incompatibility with one of your plugins? Wow, that could be a problem. You might not want to do this so fast or only do it for what I would call safe, small, easy plugins, but even that's really maybe not the best advice. So now you have the chance, if you want to update your plugin, okay, or to keep it updated automatically. So you can select each one, and you can, if you say, I want to change my mind, it's pretty easy to go back there and change your mind. If you say, hey, I don't even want to see this stuff, then just go over here to Screen Options, 
and I am going to remove auto updates and apply and you'll see it's not even there. It's just like it used to be, right? So now one thing I also want to bring your attention to, you know how in the block directory I installed hot accordion? Well, here it is, right? So it's just a regular plugin, but it's just a very easy way to install plugins without having to come to the plugin page to install a plugin. Well, that's definitely revolutionary and something you're going to see a lot more of in the years to follow in WordPress. So I'm going to just leave it over here. If I wanted to uninstall it, you know I would deactivate it and uninstall it. The content that you created with the plugin will still be there, but the plugin, of course, that is hot accordion won't be there. So the same thing that I just did with um, the plugins, it's also available in themes. So if I click over onto themes, you'll now see, let's just take this over here and that you can enable auto updates right like this. Okay, so same idea. Uh, I would sort of be more open to the fact of doing it for the theme instead of for all the plugins, but it's certainly a way to keep your site up to date with not having to look at it constantly. If you look at it all the time and work on it all the time, you might not want to do that. The bottom line for all this is if you're going to do any auto updating, make sure that you have a backup for your site. That should go without saying, but some people still don't have backups or not sure where the backups are. So make sure that you have a backup. Okay, a couple other new features. In addition to auto update, there's something now built into WordPress called XML sitemaps. Let me show you what it looks like. Let me see where it is. Here it is. So this is just a file actually that I'm displaying in the browser. And the file is called wp-sitemap.xml. Now, most SEO plugins like Yoast, Rank Math, All-in-One SEO do this for you automatically. And so what happens if they do it for you automatically and now WordPress does it for you automatically? I don't know the answer to that. I think you're going to get a choice of which XML sitemap you want. All right, so what is an XML sitemap? This is what Google, when it comes to your site with the Google bot, this is what Google looks at to start to understand the structure of your site, how links relate to each other, okay? And, and it actually sort of clicks on figuratively these links that you give it, and it goes to other sitemaps. In other words, let's say for all your posts and pages and categories and so forth, you, it accesses them through this sitemap. And then it gets to understand the hierarchical structure of your site. And it begins the process of indexing your site. The point is, do you really need two XML sitemaps? And the answer is probably not. It's not useful at all to have two of them. One will be sufficient. So that's something you're going to want to check to see how WordPress handles the fact that you may already have an XML sitemap with an SEO plugin that you're using. But for those of you who don't have an SEO plugin, you now automatically will have an XML sitemap. So I suppose this is a pretty good idea. And the last thing I want to show you in a big list of really big changes, actually, I'll just talk about it and not show you, is something called lazy loading. So the way this works is, so the purpose of lazy loading is to improve the speed of your website, or specifically a page that has a lot of images. And you've seen this before when you scroll a page, images will sort of like magically come up from the bottom. And... The, here's the difference between lazy loading and not lazy loading. In the not lazy loading way, if you had, let's say, 50 images on the page, all of those images would have to be downloaded to the user at the same time. Now, with lazy loading, the images are loaded on a like just-in-time basis. If, so if you have 50 images and they only see 20, only those 20 are going to get downloaded, not all 50 that are connected with a particular page. It will make speeding up a page with a lot of images a lot faster. So that's it. WordPress 5.5 is packed with new features. It has more features in it since Gutenberg was released in December 2018. So have fun.